Hey, listeners, if you haven't heard about Anchor.fm, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Anchor.fm is free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M. Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life, and where we answer the question, what does food mean to you? Hey, this is Maria Liberati, and thank you all for listening in and joining me. As always, I have a fun segment for you today. You know, we're celebrating National Banana Bread Day this week, and I'll be sharing a recipe for banana bread with a little bit of an Italian twist. I also have an interview with Andrew Cotto. He is an award-winning author, regular contributing writer for the New York Times, and he's going to share with us some info on his latest book release, Cucina Romano. And also I'll be sharing the foodie word of the week, and we're starting a new segment called Restaurant Stories, So Restaurant Stories will be a segment where we give a shout out to restaurants, actually restaurants all around the world, big and small. And uh, if you have a restaurant, just like or share hashtag the Maria Liberati show and you could be featured as one of the restaurants of the week and also you may be interviewed as one of our featured restaurants of the week but we'll be giving a shout out and telling a little bit of stories from some of the restaurants that we're all missing being able to get to so first you know this week we're celebrating national banana bread day and who doesn't like banana bread. And uh, I wanted to share my recipe for banana bread. It's a special recipe. It's very, actually it's simple, but it has a little bit of an Italian twist to it because I add ricotta in the recipe. No butter, but I add ricotta. So the recipe is two eggs, two cups of sifted flour, a half a cup of sugar, four ripe bananas, a half a cup of ricotta, one teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of vanilla, some lemon juice, freshly squeezed lemon juice, and that's going to be just to squeeze over the bananas once you mash them so they don't turn brown, and a pinch of cinnamon and a pinch of salt. So what you're going to do is first mash the bananas with a fork and squeeze the juice of a half of a lemon, you know, squeeze that on top of the bananas because you're going to set aside and you don't want the bananas turning brown. But the choice of the bananas that you use for this is really fundamental for this the success of this recipe you can't choose bananas that are hard or too green because they will not they won't be sweet and they'll be almost impossible to mash and you can't choose bananas that are overly ripe you need something that's really gold yellow very very yellow definitely ripe but not overly ripe that there's a lot of a lot of spots on them something that is definitely ripe just before it's going to turn too ripe so you have to be really take care in the bananas that you choose that's a really important part of this recipe so anyway you've mashed your bananas you squeeze the juice of a half of a lemon on top set that aside the next thing is you're going to put in a bowl the ricotta and the sugar and you're going to cream those two ingredients together with a blender or a food processor or a mixer electric mixer 
then once those ingredients are creamed together you're going to add in the eggs one at a time add in the vanilla and then what you're going to do is sift in the flour the baking powder pinch of cinnamon pinch of salt you're going to sift all that together and add that in fold that into the mixture a little bit at a time then once that's all blended together you're going to then fold the bananas in once that's all folded in together you're going to line two pound cake pans with parchment paper now you can also put butter and flour or oil on them if you'd like but i like lining the pans with parchment paper it's a lot easier because then you can just pull the each of the breads right out of their pans by pulling up the paper and they don't stick to the pans you don't have to worry about putting in flour or butter or anything like that you just line the pans with parchment paper you're going to pour the dough now I use two small pound little like square pound cake pans you could use a large one or two small ones you're going to bake these in a preheated oven of 350 degrees for about one hour you can serve them also with uh, some powdered sugar dusted on the top also for a variation if you like walnuts you can also add walnuts into this batter you could also add chocolate chips which are really really good and you can serve the banana cake with uh, a scoop of ice cream which is really good you can also if you have powdered cocoa uh, you can put that also into the batter sort of a chocolatey oh it's really good chocolatey banana cake and the the uh, foodie word of the week well you know this week was also international mother language day we had this week it was a, it's a holiday put together by the UN the United Nations so for international mother language day this is a, a word that's a Malaysian word and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right because I don't speak that language but it's Pisan Zapra which is P-I-S-A-N-Z-A-P-R-A now what does that word mean well we're talking about National Banana Bread Day and bananas and choosing bananas well that word refers to the time it takes to eat a banana if only there was a word for that horrible wet chewing noise people make when they eat the mushy fruit that's the word to describe it in Malaysian and you can find more recipes and more culinary stories in my book series, the Gourmand World Award-winning book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. You know, there are three books in the series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Holidays and Special Occasions, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, and The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Da Vinci Style, which is all about the foodie life of Leonardo da Vinci, the town's that he lived in in Italy and the dishes that that uh, come from those particular cities there are 10 in that book those cities that the, the recipes come from but they also happen to be cities that da Vinci lived in and, and did a variety of works of art but you know he was definitely a true foodie so the basic art of Italian cooking holidays and special occasions second edition includes recipes for all the winter holidays from Christmas Eve Christmas Day New Year's Eve New Year's Day Valentine's Day the Epiphany which is also known as La Bifana and Carnival, which we call Mardi Gras in the United States. And the first book is The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, which is actually a coffee table book. All of the books do include easy to follow recipes, but they also include stories that take you to the places where those recipes came from. And then you can also look for the Basic Art of book series, which includes the Basic Art of Cocktails, the Basic Art of Coffee, the Basic Art of Experiencing Venice, the Basic Art of Pizza, the Basic Art of Pasta. You can find all of those books on Amazon and Kindle and anywhere 
you can find books online. And of course, also on my website, marialiberati.com, and on the publisher's website, artoflivingprimamedia.com. And has anyone ever taken a virtual cooking class? Well, I've been doing some and we have one coming up for Easter. It's actually going to be a virtual sweet Easter bake-along baking class. So if you'd like to join me, you can register on eventbrite.com for this virtual sweet Easter baking bake-along class. Just go to Eventbrite and if you have any questions about the event, you you are welcome to email me at maria at marialiberati.com. That event will be the sweet Easter bake-along will be on April 2nd at 2 p.m. and that will be on Zoom. So hope to see you there. You know, this week we're starting a segment called Restaurant Stories, where we give a shout out to some of the our favorite restaurants around the world. And these can be small mom and pop restaurants, large restaurants. You know, everybody has a favorite restaurant, I'm sure. And we're going to be giving a shout out to the restaurants. But if you are a restaurant owner and you like or share or tag hashtag the Maria Liberati show, we may select you to uh, be have a shout out on the Maria Liberati show. But also we will be selecting some restaurant owners to do a short interview and tell us a little bit about your restaurant or share a recipe or story. And this week, our shout out goes to Anthony Barrasso of Anthony's Italian Kitchen in Portland, Maine. Anthony told us that he learned to cook from his mom, who was from Naples, and uh, she owned some drug stores, but they had to close up the drug stores because all of the drug stores were becoming these big conglomerates, CVS and Rite Aid, and all these big conglomerates. So, The mom and pop drug stores were just not making it. And uh, Anthony's family decided to open up Anthony's Italian Kitchen. It's in Portland, Maine, in the old, located in the old port. And I understand they also have dinner theater on the weekends. So check out Anthony's Italian Kitchen in Portland, Maine. In the old port, if you go there, tell them you heard about them from the Maria Liberati show and be sure to share and hashtag the Maria Liberati show and and share that with Anthony's Italian Kitchen. Now, I'm always telling everyone to share with us on social media in a post of 50 words or less or a sound bite of 60 seconds or less your answer to what does food mean to you but my next guest award-winning author andrew kato really tells us what does food mean to you well he actually he answered that question but what does food mean to you well this uh his book cucina romana is definitely definitive of what does food mean to you I am with Andrew Pato. It's always great to have him. He's an award-winning author and contributor to the New York Times. If you need to take a trip to Italy and can't do it physically, you can do it in your mind through Andrew's books. They just are definite culinary trips to Italy, armchair, armchair culinary trips to Italy. Andrew, thanks so much for being with us. And oh, thank you for having me. Yes, and I'm excited to hear about the new release. So tell us about your book that's coming out March 25th, right? Yeah, so the book, this new book, uh, Cucina Romana, which will be my sixth novel. Wow, I know. I, I'm just looking at my books on my shelf like, oh my God, that's, that's a lot of books. <laughs> um, and and it's, it's sort of almost like, a, like, I guess it's sort of a lockdown baby in ways because I ended up writing it entirely during the first six months of the lockdown and it's somehow coming out um within six months after that which is a you know in publishing that's rare the normal process is you know from beginning to 
bookstore is like three to four years typically. Yes. Um, it takes a couple yes. years to write a novel. Um, then you got to get the publisher to approve it. Then they go through all their rigmarole and then they have to schedule it. Right? What happened here is that I sat down and just hammered this book out. Um, you know, you know, it's not sloppy. You know, it's, it's, it's well done. I was just yes. so immersed in it because I needed to get away every day to Italy. You know, this was my vacation. This was my this was my 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 sanctuary. You know, to help deal with being locked down. I don't like you know, no one likes being locked down. I know, but I'm an extrovert, and I wanted to be out, and I wanted to be about. I wanted to be you know, I, my teaching job was 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 eliminated. I was sent home. Right. I, I needed to sort of you know find something to do to burn off all that you know that all that, that, that energy I had normally in me, and I poured it into this book to experience Italy in a, in, a, in, a, in a figurative way every day to be amongst the beauty and the food um, and the people, and then hopefully be able to share that with people. You know, um, I write for myself and others, and, and I, I really wanted to help transport people to Italy too, because I know that you know people are longing for the Italian experience, and it's one of the things that we're, we're denied, right? We're, we're denied travel you know, to grandma's house on Sunday, but we're also denied travel to places that we love to go. Um, and Italy is my place. And I know I am not alone in that. So, you know, I, I did this as a labor of love um, for me and my, my my fellow Italiophiles. I know Cucina Tipica was mostly about Florence, wasn't it? In Tuscany, rather, Tuscany? Yeah. Um, so this one, what made you decide to do the next sequel on... I'm I'm sure it's probably on Rome, right? Could you know? Yeah, yeah. So this this one takes place. So the main character settles in Tuscany. The the the, the adventure part of Cucina Tipica. Um, is this character who comes to Italy on holiday. His name is Jacoby Pines. He's a disheartened American who arrives in Italy on holiday and decides he never wants to leave. Right. And the, the the crux of that book's narrative is him finding a way to stay in Italy. And I, I'm, you know, spoiler alert, he finds the way. <laughs> um, there wouldn't be a sequel. Um, um, if, if, if he didn't find a way, be, the book would be called Cucina Brooklyn, I guess, because that's where he'd be. <laughs> um, so he finds a way to stay. Um, and there's there, uh, there's an aspect of of ancestry to his quest um, that they fought, that he and his his fellow expat friend Bill um, discover while they're down in Rome on some they're taking care of some affairs, right? They're trying to get acclimated in Italy and find a way to to, to buy to take over this business they acquire. Um, and so they're in Rome, I guess quasi holiday, quasi um business because they can't get anything done on the phone right from Florence right? they're calling all the you know it's a classic Italian bureaucracy yes. you know log jam um, and so they go down there in person to try and handle their affairs and while they're down there things happen that, that they didn't expect um, so I chose Rome because it's, it's close to Florence it's a, it's a capital it made sense plot wise right but also because I love Rome I taught for a summer at John Cabot University in Trastevere and my I have dear friends who live there in fact my friend Bill who is it was, is exactly Bill in the book. In fact, I didn't even change Bill's last name. He is the second, the, the most important secondary character to the main character. Oh, who's fictional. Yeah. But the character of Bill, Guyon, is my buddy Bill, who lives in Rome. I met him when I was teaching here for summer. He's a dear friend of my friend who, who brought me over to Rome to teach. Um, and so I brought them down there and sort of used the, their, my friend's experience, my friend's um know daily experiences in Rome you know working at John Cabot University um, you know um, hanging out in this expat community so I, I used all that familiarity um, to inform this narrative that's what I was going to ask you I was going to ask you did you write like a lot of this when you were in Italy and then just kind of continue it you know when you you know say that and then because I, I I don't know about you but I know when I when I'm in Italy it's just so inspiring I could sit and just write and it, everything is just so inspiring it just inspires you so when I'm there I don't it's it's not difficult for me to just get inspired for so many different ideas so a lot lot of the things that I use for my writing, you know, it's from things that I may have started there and then I just continue and like draw upon it. So it sounds kind of like you got what you did from your experiences there, right? Is what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, I drew heavily upon those experiences. I've lived in Tuscany, right? So when the Cucina Tipica and where, where the character Jacoby still lives is this barn in the hills south of Florence where I lived for a year in 2004. Um, the Rome experience was 2014. Um, so I wasn't writing these books then, um, but I was certainly, you know, paying close attention to what's around me yeah. um, and, and, and and sort of just storing it all. So when I went to write it, right, I, I had all these memories and, and, and you know, things 
that you know I wanted to to share about the, the physical location that informed the story's narrative. And I'm a huge believer that you know that setting you know is it, it's like a character in a story. In fact, some people believe that setting is the most important character. So I, I use the backdrop to, to inform what happens to the characters, and that was certainly the case. So I wasn't writing them then when I was there. I was just sort of I, let's call it a research, the best kind of research. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So tell us, I know your other book had some memorable food scenes that you had told us about. Is there any any particular recipe that comes out in this book? Or oh, um, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, a lot. I mean, the books are, are just absurd in, in you know, I, I'm a food writer as well, right? So like even when, so if food's important to my novels, even the ones that aren't set in Italy, you know, there, there's always food as a major factor in it. But I also do a lot of non- Nonfiction writing about food for the Times and for La Cucina Italiana and uh-huh. Rachel Ray's magazine. I'm I'm always writing about food. I, I believe you know in, in its importance to our quality of life, um, into our mental health and our physical health and our just our general well being. So I, I spend a lot of time and, and food's one of the, is the primary reason that this character is so in love with Italy. There's other things too, you know the, the physical beauty and the language and etc. Right? The way the, the the pacing, but food is the is the, is the driving force for this character because he loves to eat so much. Right? He's got this spectacular palate he just just food brings him so much pleasure so I, every meal that he takes you know you know that I, I you know describe in certain ways and of course I do so through through the lens of someone who's experimental and learning new things so the you know, the, the cuisine of Tuscany is going to be you know informed by the staples of, of Tuscan cuisine but you know you know Toscana you know bistecca fiorentinas and and ribolitas and you know all the different and of course I'm pairing them with wines that are that are that are from the region and when they're in Rome they do the Rome thing right the first night there Bill sits down Jacoby and takes them to a, a trattoria um, and they have a, a tasting menu of pastas and this is more than they would normally eat they're not governors but they had they have a cacio pepe they have a um a gricia uh, i'm sorry they have a cacio pepe a, a carbonara and a um um a bucatina matriciana you know so they had the, the, the pasta introduction but this you know they, there's there's porchetta there's you know all the staples of of, of roman cuisine find their way into different um, aspects of, of of the novel and they're all detailed you know, pretty thoroughly because I want the reader to, to feel, to experience it. Um, and I think they do. I mean, I think, you know, I, I don't want to brag, Marie, but I, I think if I have, have one skill as a writer, it, it's, it's describing food. Yes, oh, definitely, definitely. Do you have something favorite you like to cook? Because I know you like to cook too. I've been cooking and eating my way through this entire, you know, last, well, this is my entire life, basically. <laughs> my entire adult life, at least. Um, but more so, uh, obviously, as of late. Um, and I, I mean, I know that, I spent a lot of time talking about food and, you know, posting pictures about food, et cetera, you know, but I, I, I take it seriously. I, mean, I, I think, you know, it's important to eat in moderation, to eat things that are healthy, to prepare your food as much as your own food, as much as you can, and to procure those ingredients from quality producers and, and local people as, as much as possible. Um, and all that being said, I mean, I, I'm, you know, really into, um, you know, a simple meal. I mean, last night, you know, my favorite meal is always my last one I had or the one I have coming up. You know, last night I made I made um, eggs in purgatorio. You know, you know I, I I braised down some 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 kale in, in shallots and garlic. Added a couple of, of of cracked eggs, you know, whole into it. Put it in the oven and, and red and roasted red peppers and and took it out. Sprinkled it in cheese, I just say. Um, put it back in, and it was spectacular. You know, so that's my man. That that until my next meal, my next dinner is my favorite meal. And it's so simple. That's what's so beautiful about Italian food. It's simple, but, you know, it's simple, not a whole lot of ingredients. And it's just so delicious because it's real, right? It's just all real food. And just like you said, really good, really good ingredients. So, Andrew, what, um, anything coming up? What's next for you? Another book, I bet. Uh, yeah, so it, it's funny. I, I feel like it's raining novels for me, but I actually <laughs> had a book scheduled to come out. It took me three years to finish, to write, you know, to have three novels published. I'll have, I'll have three more published in the last six months. It, it's just bizarre. Yeah, um, well, I had a book come out. Pandemic, right? Well, I, I mean, part of it was the pandemic. Yeah, but like I had a book scheduled to come out, you know, prior to the pandemic. It, it's it's a it's a noir. I write in different genres. It's, oh yes, that's right. Um, it's called it's called Black Irish Blues. It's actually doing really well. And it, it, of course, the the protagonist is not a detective. He's a chef who's you know gets into some pretty gritty things. But he cooks. He he make he's making lamb chops scotadita. And you know he's he's having Sunday you know all day affairs at his at his at tavern that he owns. That came out in December. Thank you. I'm losing my That's mind. Right. I think oh. I had you on. I think we did talk about that book. Yes, That's yes. Really, I was at my dad's really house that for the holidays. Book. We were talking about it. Yeah. Yes. Well, so that came out. 
Uh -huh. um, and it's doing really well and, and getting lots of good commentary about the food stuff, which I love. So I want to write another chapter in that saga. It'll be the third installment. Um, but I'm also working on a book now. Um, the book that I was working on before the, the lockdown was one that was too heavy for me to work on during the lockdown, at wow. least at, at first. Um, it's about a friend of mine who passed away. And I was, I was trying to write a memoir about our friendship. Um, and I just couldn't. It was, you know, I don't think I could have done it prior to the lockdown either. It was just so hard to go there. So I fictionalized it. Um, and I made it a lot about food. I mean, the book's called Pasta Mike. Um, and that's my friend is Mike. Um, and that's I, I'm it's hard. But I'm going to finish this before, you know, June, I guess, before we're all, all free to go out inside and play again. Yes. Um, and then I'm going to write another sequel to the to the Black Irish Blues. And I'm going to write another one of the Kuchina series. And this one's going to go down to the Amalfi Coast. Oh, wow. That's You'll see when you read um, Kuchina Romana, the ending. I, I'm not big on like surprise endings, but the ending, the ending is really good. <laughs> I think I was surprised myself. And it, it, it absolutely insists upon another book in the series right you could i couldn't if i ended it that way people would be mad at me and i'd, I'd be mad at me so you can see where, where it ends it lends itself to another one of the series and i'm going I'm to take the characters down to the amalfi coast oh, oh that's one of my favorite places i did a pbs tv series that i did we did a whole long segment amalfi ravello and positana oh my gosh that was i have a confession here yeah i've never been there oh you're kidding oh, no gosh well, the thing was, um, my first episode, they had told me we were going to do it in some town outside of Rome, and that got canceled, and they called me up, and they're like, well, uh, sorry to tell you, we're not going to, I forget what the town was, I'm like, are you kidding? No, but we're going to Amalfi, Positano, and Ravella, this is for the first episode, I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my God, it was wonderful, a week oh. there, and just filming in it's just the lemons alone you just go crazy over the lemons because they're the size of cantaloupes and they're just so fragrant but anyway i'm sure you will once the lockdown's done so. yeah it's, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to go again research maria research definitely definitely for that research so work, Andrew, work, work. yes so tell us andrew i know i asked you this before but i always ask every guest what does food mean to you? Is everything too simple of an answer? I mean, I, I, I think that, you know, food works, is, food's so important to me because anything I think that has a profound impact works for you on numerous levels, right? I mean, there, there is there is the nourishment, of course, of just surviving, right? People, there's people who just eat to live, right? And I think I, I live to eat um, because eating provides me pleasure. I, I enjoy you know, tasting things and chewing them and swallowing them and then washing them down with wine and then repeating. I, I enjoy preparing food. You know, I, I love to cook. You know, I, I've cooked most of my life. My mother, my mother's a great cook who taught me. You know, I worked at a restaurant in college. You know, I love cooking. I love buying the ingredients. I love people who who, who sell food and, and produce food. So I like meeting the people, you know, that are involved with food. Um, and most important, I like sharing it, you know, with people, you know, I mean, sitting around the table with, with friends and family and, and enjoying food that you prepared together or that you went out to a restaurant to, to, to enjoy is my favorite thing to do. You know, some people might like to go to the racetrack or the horse or, or the basketball game or the football game or whatever, you know, they, they, my favorite thing to do, right. Is eating with people. You know, um, because I just find the experience to be so validating. I mean, this is like we are here to enjoy each other's company um, and enjoying each other's company over food just enhances that experience to a point where there's nothing else that I'd rather be doing. And it does. I, I agree with you. I agree with you so much. So uh, I know sharing food and just, you know, taking the time to share it and eat with friends and family. It's just such a such a fun thing. Maybe we grew up with that. And that's why we're so in tune to that. But it is it's just a wonderful experience. So thank you for sharing that. Andrew Cotto, award winning author and regular New York Times contributor. And tell us so where this book, Gina Romana, Another Italian adventure is coming out. You told me March 25th. Where can we find it? Yeah, it's it's available everywhere. I mean, of course, it, it's already up and available for pre-order now. So you can find it on websites of Amazon or Barnes and Noble, etc. I mean, your local bookstore will order it. I just had a the, the best post yesterday from my favorite bookstore in Boston called I Am Books. It's I as an Italian am American books. It's a great little bookstore in the North End. Uh, they're going totally online for the time being, um, but they have copies. You know, so if you have a, you know you want to order from them, you can find them at I Am Books Boston. Um, of course, your local bookstore will be able to order it and, and bring it in um, for the 25th of March. I'm having a release party for the book. 
yes. um, on Facebook Live and Instagram Live on March 13th, Saturday um, at 7 o'clock Eastern. My buddy Rocco Despierto is going to come over and cook for me, too. Wow. I actually did. He had a radio show in New York City, and I, yeah. I was a guest on his radio show. This was when he had the show. I couldn't even tell you. It was like probably 10 years ago. Wow, that's great. That's really exciting. Yeah, we're both going to get, you know, COVID tests and make sure we're cool. And he's going to come over and he's going to make some food. From, I'm going to read from the book and he's going to he's going to do a cooking demo of a couple of different dishes from the from the story. That's, well, March, that's, that's March 13th at 7 o'clock Eastern on Facebook and Instagram Live. And I'm Andrew Cotto at all these things. One word, Andrew Cotto, C-O-T-T-O. You can yeah. find me easily. Yes, yeah, so people can find you online. That's so great. That is so exciting, Andrew. Thanks again. And yep, let me know when your next one comes out. Always, always a pleasure to hear from you and to have you share with the listening audience. Uh, you're taking us away to to Italy, um, especially now that we, most of us can't go there. So thanks again, Andrew, and much success with this book, too. Thank you so much, Maria. We'll look for you on March 13th at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live for that. Um, and Instagram Live. Yes. And Instagram Live, too. Double Live. Double Live. I'm covering Double all the Yes, <laughs> Facebook and Instagram Live, March 13th at 7 p.m. Great. Thanks again, Andrew. Hey, thanks for joining me and listening to the Maria Liberati Show and sharing this time with me. And I'd like to also thank my producer, Britton Roselle. Thanks to Andrew Cotto for sharing his new book with us. And don't forget, join me on April 2nd for a virtual sweet Easter baking event on Zoom. And you can go to Eventbrite and get tickets for it. You can register right there. There. And also follow me on Twitter at Maria Liberati. That's with a capital M on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati. On Instagram at Maria Liberati. On LinkedIn at M Liberati. And if you want more recipes or culinary travel stories, be sure to check out my book series, The Gourmand World Award-Winning Book Series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, that includes The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Holidays and Special Occasions Second Edition, and The Basic Art of Italian Cooking Da Vinci Style, The Basic Art of Book Series, that includes The Basic Art of Coffee, The Basic Art of Pizza, The Basic art of pasta, the basic art of cocktails, the basic art of experiencing Venice, and the basic art of creating a Tuscan wedding. You can find those books online at marialiberati.com, at artoflivingprimamedia.com, or anywhere books are sold online. And if you have a restaurant and like to be featured on the Maria Liberati show, like us, tag the show, hashtag the Maria Liberati show, and you may be featured on the show or you may actually even get an interview on the show and if you don't have a restaurant but you'd like to share with us your favorite restaurant that you think should be featured let us know like or share the show you can also email me at maria at maria liberati.com and if you make the banana bread please share a picture hashtag at the maria liberati show or hashtag Liberati banana bread and you may win a copy of one of the books from my book series the basic art of Italian cooking that's right share a picture of the banana bread that you made hashtag it Liberati banana bread and you may be selected to win a copy of one of the books from my the basic art of Italian cooking book series and don't forget share with us what does food mean to you on social media? Hashtag it the Maria Liberati show. Until next time, peace, love, and pasta.